Um, I live in central coast of California, and I have been doing wildlife rehabilitation for about 15 years with uh, all kinds of animals. But early on, I said I would do uh, take care of some little baby seagulls, which are really gulls. And that got me started on this path of seabirds. And uh, over the years, I've had many, many pelicans in my yard, and they quickly became my favorite bird. <laughs> so years went by, and we got this one bird named Moro, who you're gonna, you see behind me here. I'll, t I'll tell you in a minute which is which. And um, he had an injured wing, and he couldn't be released, even though we tried to get him to his wing fixed well enough to be able to fly. He could never fly. So I applied for a permit and I got a permit to take him out and do education. Then he was lonely. So eventually we got uh, Solimar, which was just this last year. We've had him a little less than a year. So now he's so happy. They're both happy to have each other. Moro and Solimar, these guys are adult California brown pelicans. I'm going to get a little closer. We'll oh, see. I like how we can see that diamond on their neck. Yeah. I know you rarely get to get that close to them. So Moro, if you're looking at him, Moro's left wing is kind of drooping. I don't know if you can see that. Yes. He's the one in the foreground. Yep. And the one in the rear, his right wing, who just pooped, <laughs> his, <laughs> his right wing is drooping. So that each each of them had uh, injuries to, to the opposite wing from one another, which um, enables uh, or disables them from flying. Um, you can tell they're adults. And the way you can tell they're adults is they've got all that beautiful red and yellow and white and a brown neck plumage. These are both males. And you can't tell they're males because the females and the males look identical. I'm going to try and get a little closer, see if we can, if they'll tolerate that. And let me know if they go out of, out of the frame. Um, the way you tell males from females are the length of their bill. And if you have a male next to a female, you can often tell by visually, but we just, in rehab, we just measure that bill. And the shorter bills are the females. So we know that both of these are males and you can't tell by looking at them, but we measured their bills so we know they're males but they tend to fish only in the first maybe 10 feet of water. So they don't fish deep. They don't swim and dive down deep to get fish. They fly above, um, sometimes 50, 70 feet up in the air looking. And when they decide to, that there's fish down there, they turn head down and they what, do what they call a plunge dive. The brown pelicans are the only pelicans in the world that plunge dive. What do you feed them? I go back and forth between anchovies and sardines, depending on the availability. So they get upset, then they regurgitate their fish. And that's kind of a, a defense. If they need to, see, you can see he's doing it now. If they need to get away quickly, they and other seabirds do this too, they they regurgitate their fish and it lightens them up so that they can fly off. So don't worry, I'll feed them some more. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I forget if you mentioned how long have you been caring for them? Moro I've had since 2009. Okay. He was born in 2008. And the reason we know that is in the first few years based on their feather, uh, feathers, colorations, you can kind of you can tell how old they are. So I can tell a first year from a second year from a third year. Once they get past that, they're, they're simply an adult. Wow. Yeah. How long do they live in the wild if they on a good day? <laughs> <laughs> well, the longest they recorded was 43 years. 
Oh my. I know. I was surprised when I found that out. I mean, I started working with these guys and then I learned about them more. And they um, probably, gener in general, probably live to 30, 20 to 20s to 30s, but um, they can live longer. I know several in Florida that are in their 20s. So. Pelican Dreams. Pelican Dreams. And Moro is in that film. Oh. Yeah. He, okay, guys, that's okay. I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, he is... Um, He's a pretty prominent uh, bird in that film. But in the film, it's a good one because it shows you all of the different um, uh, problems that they encounter. And um, from fishing line and fish hooks, uh, because you see oftentimes they're going after the bait, the bait. Right, fish. right. And uh, if they're really hungry and they're really young, They'll go for anything. And then we have another problem here on our piers where we have fish cleaning stations. Um, yes. Often any bird, seabird will hover around waiting for food. And uh, it's a kind of a bad cycle because the, the fishermen just want to get rid of the birds. So they throw them fish. But what happens is then that uh, exacerbates the problem because then the, the, and then they say, oh, there's fish here. We keep coming back. So it, it, right. it, it continues this bad cycle. So we've, I've worked on um, a couple of different peer uh, projects to get those fish cleaning stations changed so that they can't easily or feed the pelicans at all unless they come out of the station. Oh, look at them, how they're just so together. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you uh, and oh you know what as another thing when they're uh, when they're in breeding plumage their eyes turn blue now I wish I could get really close so you could see their blue blue eyes but the rest of the year they are brown mm. isn't, isn't that fascinating that their eyes turn colors yep amazing make them more attractive eh yeah yeah <laughs> got to do all we got to get do all we can how huh, to advertise what other kind of uh, critters have you got in your oh, well these are parakeets these were a rescue too someone had a there was a hoarding case and um so i took several parakeets parakeets I, or budgies budgies okay we'll come in here and they weren't, um, they weren't handled. They were just in an aviary, so they won't come to my finger or anything, but you should be able to see them quite well. Oh, yeah. So this little um, enclosure that I'm in was where I raised baby songbirds for my local wildlife group for, for several years. And uh, I got kind of tired, so I, I stopped doing that for a while. Now this here is a male that's right in front of me, the yellow green and yellow yep. green. Do you know how to tell the male from the female? I used to. <laughs> it's hard maybe to see, but he has a little blue nary. Nary? Yes. Right the, above, above, the the, above the beak. It's a yep. little bit bluish, and that's a male. He's the only male in here. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 but um, but they're all very content and that's their food bowl do they nest at all well i'm not giving them a nest i don't uh, okay think, uh, i'm trying not to have more you know i figure right that, uh that's one of the things about rescuing there's so many birds out there instead of having or animals in general dogs cats and everybody else that it's just in my opinion better to just rescue and adopt rather than than uh, breed and I'll show you how they, you can see how they have a difficulty walking. Oh. See, that's Waddles. Yeah. Now, the one over here is, that walks just fine. She's Millie, but she was dumped at a local lake. She's very friendly. Say hi, Millie. Say hi, Millie. <laughs> <laughs> and 
the white the white one is Bonnie. Sorry, Wawa. Sorry, Wawa. Okay, say hi again. Okay, well, that's it. That's it. And then the chickens are just my chickens. They're not rescues. We'll go back and maybe you can see the boys. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Millie is a love. In fact, I rescued her and I tried to find a home for her and I had her about a week and I said, oh, no, no, she's not going anywhere. I'm keeping that bird. She is so sweet. There so we go. Tomorrow the water. Yeah, this <laughs> oh, you're the putting on a show for us. Goodness. Oh, yeah. They're talking. Uh, that's the loudest their voices get. They they do a pantomime. They don't really have a loud honk like the geese, thank goodness, or uh, or uh, any real voice other than a. <sighs> wow. So, but they do pantomime, so I know some of their what they're saying um, when they wave their beaks around. And they kind of connect beaks. They're just saying, I'm okay, you're okay kind of thing. I like you. I, I You can stay. I want to stay. See? That's what a beautiful thing. pouch. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see the blue eyes yet? I'm going to try and get a little closer. <laughs> can you see that they have a dark pupil and then a light? can see the light yeah oh <laughs> yeah so this is their yeah. little deck my husband built for them they like to hang out there sometimes this isn't their favorite spot they like to go out to a big yard that we have where it's all grassy and and uh i i'd love to take you out there see if maybe they if my cell phone is when i get out too far from the house then the cell phone is a little spotty the signal yeah yeah so that was moro that just jumped off and then let's see solimar is going to do the same they're like oh we're out of here okay i'm going to open the gate and let them out and see if we can walk without making you dizzy they'll be happy to get out Those are those aloe, tree aloe, they call them. Beautiful. Aren't they beautiful? I've seen lots of aloe. I've never seen the flower before. Yeah, this is a particular aloe called tree aloe. Well, I, I don't know if, you know, I'm sure it's a different name, but that's what I know it as, tree aloe. Get close to one of the flowers and hold it steady. Yeah. Isn't that Perfect. gorgeous? Yeah. And we I have about them. three big plants blooming right now um, and then they also just take off so I'm going to move a little if that's okay and I want to show you this see this other one back here mm -hmm. we didn't plant that <laughs> <laughs> that just happened a piece must volunteer. have volunteer oh, and I see your artichoke too yeah an artichoke and then let me and uh there's the boys again. <laughs> There's Wawa. I call them Wawa Waddles. You see how Bonnie, how she walks, see how she's like not standing on that right leg very well? Yeah. Yeah. Her mate was killed. And she must have been injured because she's always been like that. And, and they seem to have a good life. They're just... They're just educators now. That's what I say. They have a second life as teachers. <laughs> but it's wonderful when the kids, especially little kids, when they come out of their crate and they're as tall as some of the kids. It's really exciting for them to oh, see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they just, wow. Because <laughs> they are impressed. I mean, you get up close and see how big they are. It's really something. Yeah. They weigh about 10 pounds. Uh, they look like they weigh a lot more than that, but they, because their bones are hollow and they have a lot of down and then a root 
interesting uh, aspect to pelicans is underneath their skin, they have what literally looks like bubble wrap. And ah. uh, yeah, a couple of things that's good for. One is to help cushion them when they dive from 50, 60, 70 feet in the air into the ocean. And it also makes them more buoyant. So they pop up to the surface easier because they have a lot of air sacks. And then of course it helps keep them, you know, with all the down and the, the all that, it keeps them warm too. Do they have those oil glands that they use to coat feathers like ducks and other some birds? No, they don't have oil glands. They have a gland down at the base of their uh, tail or the top of their tail at the base of their body. And it's, it's called a preen gland, but all that does is it's like moisturizer. It helps, uh, they, you know, it helps them go through their feathers easier. Kind of like if you've washed your hair and then you put moisturizer, your hair, your hands go through your hair much easier. Um, so they have something like that. But the only thing that makes them waterproof is the alignment of their feathers. Hmm. And if you see feathers up close and in a microscope, you can see that they're connected like bar uh they're called barbs and barbules and then those are off of the the um off of the uh the made the main um uh stem or whatever you, i can't think right now but they 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 hook together and it be, creates a barrier from water entering because it's smaller than a water molecule uh oh. tighter, tighter than a water molecule so that's where you say see water off a duck's back it's not because of any oil that protects them. It's literally the alignment of their feathers. So if they get a tear from a fish hook or they get oil, you know, anything that interrupts that bond of the interlocking feathers and um, barbules is what allows water to get in. And then once they get into, water gets in to their skin, they're just like us. Our, our ocean out here is about 52 degrees right now. It ranges 50, 50 to 56. Um, but they're just like us. If they had a wound and they got, a, and they got in that ocean, they'd want to get out right away because it would, um, it would uh, get into their skin and then wick throughout their entire body. They would be completely wet. They would be just like us. They would get hypothermic and could die. So it's so important, you know, brushing their hair all day long <laughs> is, is a, you know, is, is something that's absolutely necessary for them. So you'll see that's, they do that. They sleep a lot. And, you know, it's interesting. I don't know if you could see if you were close enough, if or the camera ever got close enough where you could see at the bottom of their bill, they have a little hook. I don't know if you could see that, but that hook uh, helps them to go through those feathers individually. They can go through one individual feather with those the, with those little hooks on the end of their bill. And also, if they were to get any kind of uh, uh, feather mites, little parasites, they can uh, take them out with that. And they can pick up small individual fish. So, th so that's a real important function of their bill thank you so very much you're welcome i hope you all have a wonderful day or part of your day thank you for coming to visit that's the first pelicans <laughs> yep <laughs> okay take care wonderful. everyone thank, thank you john you too thank you bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. bye.